Hello, and welcome to yet another completely unprofessional interview. Scott here, and this is the only tabletop RPG review show that requires a two Foster's limit for entry. Uh, <laughs> so um, today I am speaking with my friend and game designer, Blake Ryan from Down Under. And for those of you who don't know where Down Under is, it is not the Nine Hells. It is Australia, so it's close. Um, but uh, <laughs> we, we have more spotters. <laughs> yes. Um, so yes, I'm here to talk. I'm here to have a chat today with Blake Ryan, and uh, we're going to talk about uh, his gaming background, what got him into game design, and also more importantly, uh, have a chat about his most recent Kickstarter, uh, "Don't Pay the Ferryman," which is currently um, uh, currently active and running. Um, and this, the "Don't Pay the Ferryman," is not only compatible for PBTA but also for Dragonbane. So we're going to be talking with Dragonbane for a little bit. But uh, but first, Blake. How you doing, buddy? How you doing today? G'day. Uh, not too bad. Mm -hmm. It's a bit cold. It's a bit We're cold. still just getting into spring and <laughs> yeah, cold morning. Yeah, you, you you told me when we were chatting before we started recording that um, uh, that it, it it's in the 30s Fahrenheit currently down there. Yeah, yeah. Oh. About one Celsius and 33 Fahrenheit. So yeah. Uh, I pr yes. Thankfully, most of my most of the people who watch this are from the UK, so they know what Celsius means. But for those uh, in America that are watching this, uh, you can do your own math. Um, but uh, but anyways, Blake. So uh, we tend to do the, the, the standard rigmarole roll here because I I personally find it in interesting. So I hope you don't mind. But one of the oh, first really? things that I'd like to ask those who pop on is, um, what was your introduction uh, to gaming? You know, usually specifically role playing games. So it doesn't have to be that. And uh, uh, what got you, what was your introduction, and where did that take you from that point? Okay, um, a friend from high school invited me to come play D&D, &D, mm -hmm. but his group, were, oh, squirrel, they would change <laughs> every couple of weeks between Rollmaster, D&D, &D, and Space Master. And so in the first six months we played, you know, a bit of three different series of games. Before that, I guess the movie Excalibur and Masters of the Universe, mm -hmm. which sort of planted the seed of fantasy stuff. Yeah. Maybe a dash of what's his face, Ulysses Thirty One. Ah. Which was quite fantasy for sci-fi, but still. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, it was. I was uh, um, July '89. Mm -hmm. So it was. Second edition AD and D was just out. Yep. I think it was first edition Rollmaster and Space Master. I just remember they had tiny margins. They crammed a lot of shit into every page. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it, it is interesting. Uh, you're, you're the first person that I've spoken to. I mean, not not just on the show, not just on the the podcast, but I think in person, who their introduction was Rollmaster, um, mm -hmm. which which uh, which you know. Which is a good foundation, I think, because what it what it, by having Role Master and Space Master as your introduction, things get a lot easier uh, from that point forward. <laughs> I would imagine. So, uh, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of character injury and death, and it's yeah, you, you, you get over. Oh no, my character's dying because when you're not playing smart, you're doing the charge in, kick the door in, mm -hmm. grab the thing in Role Master, you get dead real quick <laughs> there are a lot of TPKs. <laughs> you you've you've died from kicking the door in uh yeah. essentially so so that we were, we were all 15 and didn't play smart yeah <laughs> so i i'm curious though um i mean i would imagine you this was in australia at the time right you, this you, yeah, you've yeah. lived there your whole life so um as you and I are about the same age, um, so during that time, you know, the in the you know eighties through the nineties, um, what was it? Did you have the same amount of games available to you that that was you know available to the rest of the world? Um, I know in certain other parts of the country, things were sometimes limited. Of course, D and D tends to be a constant, but I'm just just curious. You know, obviously, Rollmaster was something that was available, but. Um, was, yeah, was we, there? We heard of Champions mm -hmm. and RuneQuest and a few of the other sort of bigger games because this is 89, 90. Um, but there wasn't like a local gaming store. There was a, we had catalogs from the local, the biggest city in the, the next state. And mm -hmm. we would do like a big order, we'd all chip in and order a bunch of stuff. Um, but they, we had most of GDW stuff of like Traveller, Dark Conspiracy. We right. had Solid Hunt 2020, Shadowrun. 
first, then second edition. Um, but the biggest chunk of like the catalogue was generally D and D. Okay. So, but they're like mm-hmm. the the people in the shop would have their own editorial comments about <laughs> Dragonlance was the most popular until it was usurped by the mighty Forgotten Realms, and it's like this doesn't actually tell us about the game. It's just your personal opinion. <laughs> Well, it's good to know people who actually, you know, were in charge of stores, you know, universally around the world are exactly the same, um, you know, full of opinions, but never really any helpful advice to go with it. So, um, so, so you've, you've had your introduction, you, you, you've played a few games, did, and I would imagine like many of us, you know, when we were younger, we kind of dabbled about in creating, you know, uh, you know, a little bit of game design here, a little bit of adventure design and whatnot. Um, is that something that struck you early or... Or did it progressively come as you as you got older? Um, we we tried quite a few games. Like I I had a look at Earthdawn and mm-hmm. Shadowrun, Cyberpunk, and Traveller, and we would always um, hack things. So like people are oh we like the BattleTech Mechory universe, but we like the Shadowrun system more. So we're going to try and hack that and put it in there and really mash up Cyberpunk and Shadowrun, and then the reverse. Um, which is you know putting magic in cyberpunk or yeah putting all the all the, the hardcore cyberpunk elements in Shadowrun. Mm-hmm. and they all worked but yeah just a lot of heavy lifting for the uh, GM. <laughs> well, my my understanding is the Shadowrun rules just by themselves is heavy lifting reg- regardless of trying to mash it together with other things. So, so so I guess yeah. the important question well, is yeah, I mean, to, to be fair though we we had a lot of fun playing and oh yeah. I'm running Shadowrun. The magic system is still really good. There's mm-hmm. a lot of cool options once you get your head around how it works. I, I, I think that's true. I mean, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a recent, uh, 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 had a recent entry into GURPS over the past uh, few months, and I've never, that's one of the ones I've never touched or played. And I really wouldn't call myself a GURPS convert. But then again, I've also I don't I started to like you know see well what's the hate for this why why did why, why because why it's some... evil and you're going to hell I'm sorry I mean <laughs> fine I it, you no. know I, if if did, did did I did I just did I just confess it did, <laughs> did yeah I, did I just confess to murder or something uh, no, but no. but yeah so I mean Gerbs didn't take off with anyone I knew here in Australia people mm-hmm. if they're going to play with stuff like that mm-hmm. they would use um, Hero System and. That whack it in a spreadsheet like uh, what's the face it works two for DOS. <laughs> this is how old you know this was. This is a long right. time ago. Right. Yeah, I I know Blake doesn't look it. Uh, he's he's you know looks a lot better than I do. But we're you know we're only a, a, a few months apart. So so obviously you. Yeah, I hit level fifty recently. No yeah. extra hit dice. No better <laughs> thanks zero. No better saving throws. Nothing. I, I think I think the rules I think we're, the rules that we're playing with is is after forty we, we get the uh, the ability deficit going and, and other things so yep. that's not fair I, I want the one where we stay eighteen hundred strength ability until we die more like it. <laughs> so so it sounds like there was no shortage of game variety you, you you weren't you know you know not being familiar with with us you know with Australia itself and I know. At least in the current modern age, certain things may, you know, get there at a different point in time. There may be some some shipping issues or maybe, you know, just general availability, you know, for things around the world. Yeah. Aus- Australia is... Uh, the more popular games, you could generally find a game. Yeah. But we used to have this crazy thing called Usenet. And you could join in conversations and hear about other games all around <laughs> the world, even if, you know, they're all literally the other side of the planet. <laughs> Oh, well, it was like we were conversing with another planet, to be fair. Uh, but yeah, it, it yeah. definitely, yeah, yeah, that, that, oh God, I, we, we, we can do a whole episode about Usenet and how that functions. Oh, we but, did a, um, I'll, put, I'll put a thing about that. We were tossed around the idea of doing um, Shadowrun rules in Dark Sun. Mm-hmm. And people are just like, you are evil and must be destroyed. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and I agree with them. Um, so, but. Um, <laughs> So, question for you. So, again, like I said, there's no shortage of games. You were obviously exposed to a variety of, of, of games, a variety of systems. So, you know, you, you know, you had to go with a lot of these things. And, of course, you, you established your preferences. You, you gained some experience. Um, so, as you, know, as you got older, did you, did you continue to play through, like, university and onward? Or, or did you tend to, you know, and, and beyond that, did you happen to hit a... A dry spell like so so many of us have you know as we you know get jobs responsibilities and children dry spell yeah probably early 2000s mm-hmm. um 
this little barely known game called World of Warcraft come out. And <laughs> oh, God. truckloads of people just left. They simply weren't available to play a run because they were too busy playing WoW. So they didn't prep for the game. <laughs> Or if they were the players, they just didn't rock up because they're too busy doing a six-hour raid. Yeah. Oh my and god. Just, yeah. I mean, there was a little bit before that with Ultima Online and mm-hmm. EverQuest, but yeah, the digital MMO thing killed a lot of groups because just the players weren't there anymore. Yes, I I agree, and I was a victim of that also, but also a participant. To be fair, um, so yeah, I wasn't. I definitely wasn't a tabletop purist, and. And, and World of Warcraft was definitely something, again, if you're of a certain age, was you just the, it was very hard to avoid and something that most people didn't resist. Um, yeah. but, uh, but, I mean, I, I had some good times playing yeah. the game, same as Neverwinter Nights, and we set up the system worlds and played with people there. Mm-hmm. But it, it did take from the amount of people available to play out tabletop games. Oh, totally. I, they were I, all busy. It, the, the, the odd as- aspect of it was, uh, you know, with, with this kind of thing was, I enjoy the, the, you know, the company of people playing, you know, um, at the table with role playing games. When it comes to video games, I don't want to talk to anyone. I don't want to see you. I, I just, I want, I, 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 that's, that's me time. So, so my, my experience with a lot of wow was, you know, just, Hey, join a guild. No, fuck off. Um, I'm going to go my own way. Um, or, or just having like one friend that, that, that we played with and whatnot. So, uh, I, I never got into, you know, the, the idea of, I could sit around a table and, and role play just fine with, with tabletop games, but the idea of going into like a wow, special role playing, um, uh, server just had no interest to me whatsoever. Yeah. So, so I, I, I left we, Warcraft we went relatively. To one and they were role playing as if they were in Middle Earth, <laughs> and they were speaking Sindarin and all sorts of shit. And we're like, "What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> oh, can we swear? Of course you can. <laughs> this is my channel. Yeah, Do whatever you want." But it's just like you came into WoW to play Lord of the Rings. Like, yeah. there's a Lotro game already out there. I mean, um, which I tried out as well. It's all right, but all the exactly. helmets look like cake tins. It's like, <laughs> oh, this needs an upgrade. <laughs> it was shocking at the start. So it did get better. So you, you obviously, so you had you had some sort of drought like we did. So we were kind of on the, the same course. Um, obviously, you you know you 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 know had a career. You had a family, um, as you know, as I know. Uh, but what was what was it that brought you? Was there a particular thing that brought you back in, or as well? Begin to to wit. No, to I was fade. always trying to yeah. run and play okay. the games. Okay. And the 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 MMOs were just sort of a sideline, something to do. Uh-huh. But I was always trying to do that. Okay. In '98, I was trying to make a homebrew world because I I had some love hate relationship with Great Book and Forgotten Realms. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we all so do. <laughs> I kept sort of working on that, trying to find different games. Yeah. And. Um, yeah, I kept it going. Okay. So, what then? We'll, we'll fast. For, we'll hit press the press the uh, fast forward button here a little, little bit. So, what brought you back in? Because when, when when I met you online, you know, a, a couple years ago, um, you know, one of the things that that at least you know I knew about you was um, you know a lot of the stuff that you've done previously to um, to don't pay the ferryman, uh, you know, dabbled within powered by the apocalypse. So. What? When was that introduced to you? I mean, or when did you find Powered by the Apocalypse? I should say. Um, I think it was 2016. Okay. I was talking to me about different games, saying oh, I like these fantasy stuff, but I'm not a rules as written guy. I'm like, no, I'm more interested in the story and what makes sense. Okay. And sticking with your own conventions and that. Mm-hmm. Talking to different people about different games because Palladium had good and bad things. D&D had good and bad things. Right. Walmart had good and bad things. And then someone pointed me to One Shot and Misdirected Mark podcast. Ah, okay. And just listening to them, I was exposed to a bunch of these indie games that I'm like, what the hell is this? Because there was no PBJ stuff in the in the game store here in Adelaide. Mm-hmm. Um, and just listening to those two, I was like, oh, what's that game? So every new game I was exposed to, I'd find out about. So, and I, I took an interest in Dungeon World and Monster of the Week. But before I run them, I'd already listened to like 30 hours of actual play. Right. So I'm like, yes, this is more the flow of what a game I want. It's much more cooperative and interactive. Okay. Um, 
And yeah, so before I actually had the physical book in my hand, I was, I'd already <laughs> watched a bunch of AP or listened to a bunch of AP. Yeah. And that was, yeah, that was really useful. Okay. And then they introduced me to the gauntlet. Mm-hmm. Um, someone else mentioned liminal, and then I joined the Midchester and the rest is history. The rest is history, yes. So, so, but it, there, you know, there's hundreds and, or I should say thousands probably, there's thousands of people who love Powered by the Apocalypse. I mean, it's widely popular. Uh, there's several different ways to play it, but I, I, you know, again, I think it it takes it's a different person who says I really love this game and I love creating games for myself and my friends, but I also want to create something to share with people that I don't know. Uh, that you know, and that's that's the 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 auspices of of, of being a game designer. So so it, it looks like you know you you've started you started producing stuff and and eventually you, you started putting stuff up on drive through. Um, which then led to the creation of, a, uh, of, um, you know, you, it looks like you've done some, uh, you made some critters for dungeon world. Um, you know, Auss- Auss- Aussie critters. Yes. Yes. We're going, we're going back in time here a little bit for you. Uh, but then eventually rolled into the, the, the creation of a season of dreams, uh, Nexus modern, modern sorcery and, and eventually, and then also, um, the, the creation of other things, which was, uh, you did don't pay the ferryman. This is like kind of a second edition, the Kickstarter. Yes. So, the, so the original one, according to this, this was created for. Um, it, it, am I reading this correctly? Um, one e what? So, what does it mean by "don't pay the ferryman"? Was for first edition old powered by powered by the apocalypse. What 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 would that yeah. mean? So, back I think it was two thousand seventeen. I made up my own PBTA thing, which is a little bit Urban Shadows, Monster of the Week, and okay. Dungeon World. And I released as Conjure Hangalas, but I mean, I was working full time. I bought my own stock art, released it into the world, mm-hmm. got completely under the radar. Um, and because of that, like, I think I only ended up with like 1500 sales or something, which sounds like a lot, but it's not compared to <laughs> well, yeah. a lot of games. It's, but, uh, you know, and then I revamped it as Don't Pay the Ferryman, mm-hmm. it sounded more metal. Well, yes, of course. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and mm-hmm. so that was all my own. Yeah, the first edition was just PBTA on this world. Okay. Um, so, so let's let's. Oh no, it's okay. That's 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 my job to help help. Oh, keep okay. That, that was part of it. <laughs> I started up my own homebrew fantasy world back in '98. Okay. All right. Yeah, you know, and I've tried running that. With Palladium and Rollmaster and D and D, and it kind of worked, kind of didn't. And I was just mm. so then I did it as kind of Hagler's and PBTA. It worked really well. Okay, but because I didn't know shit about marketing, it didn't get out there. <laughs> small, small side trick for a, a second. Yeah, imagine you're at a ball game, America's favorite pastime, right? Right. You understand you're waving your flag or your big hand or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, the people all around you can see you. Yeah. The rest of the people in the stand can't see. That's what it's like being a, an indie designer. <laughs> right. And then someone sets off fireworks at half times. That's Kickstarter. Because oh, everyone stops looking around them and goes, oh, everyone sees that, you know? And that's what crowdfunding is. I didn't do that. <laughs> I didn't know about it. So by the way, people knew about Contra Hagelas slash don't have a permanent you, you, you were out in the parking lot trying to sell bootleg T-shirts while the game was going on. It sounds like so. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. you learned your lesson, and, and that and that's <laughs> not a call. Um, a comment on the quality. I'm sorry, the quality of me as a game designer right. or the game. It's just I just didn't understand how the marketing worked, and I, because the market's saturated, you've got to really try oh God, hard yeah. to get people's attention, sort of shit. Oh God, yes. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, <laughs> you know, it's one of those things where if, if you really want eyes eyes on your, your product, what you really need to do is pick one of the least popular, um, you know, uh, RPG rule sets to, uh, to market to. Because, you know, if you're, if you're a f- fifth edition designer powered by the apocalypse and you, you're not pushing, 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 there's a good chance eyes may not fall on it. But, but with with that so you, you but you do have you have some solid products here so um before we get to don't pay the ferryman i just want you to want to touch briefly on season of dreams if you can kind of yep. tell us just a little bit about that then also about nexus mom and sorcery season of dreams was inspired by things like neverwhere and over the world over the wall sort of games where you've got a modern 
situation and then you can go through the portal and go to like uh, middle ages mm -hmm. kind of Celtic inspired thing and okay. you go back and forth you've kind of got a double life you can lean into that and have two jobs two families and all that sort of shit or you can just go no you're you're a special agent that does this sort of goes to this other world sort of thing but it's right. it's all Celtic myth monster so it's kind of not like monster of the week but much more niche okay is, is you've got a home base, you've got a set place you're going to, and yeah, that, that went alright. I played and run that quite a few times. Okay, but it's when you're an indie designer, the second you stop pushing a game, mm -hmm. it disappears because we're well, not just indie gamers, but also traditional gamers as well. It's like, oh, there's a new shiny over there. Yes, and if you don't keep waving things in people's faces, they'll go and play the new shiny again. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. For, well, as an example, you played, was it 400 sessions of Hyperborea? But yes. But you didn't just play that. You played a variety of other games during that time. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, it was, and it was 100. Uh, but it, it was it was four and a half years and, and over 100, 111 sessions or so. But yeah. But yeah, but, but you know, the what kept us together wasn't necessarily the game. It was the people, right? But still, I, yeah. I totally get it because you're right. Uh, especially these days, there's no shortage of games. There's, and there's, there's, as you can tell right now, there's, you know, five or six coming out every week. I mean, you, you, you pop into, you know, uh, Sean's um, morning stream and every time he hops on to, you know, what's new in Kickstarters this week? Um, there's five or six new games and just, just, there's just, there's no stopping yeah, yeah. it. And I'm like, what the hell is this? I've never heard of it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. No. was out a year before I'd heard of it. I mean, <laughs> I mean, seriously, Modifius put money behind Space 1999. A, a series that 99% of the people never heard of under 40-ish, if that. And even then. The only thing I know about it is it had worse special effects than Doctor Who. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the concept itself is interesting, but still. I mean, it, it, it's, you know, when it's, it's one of those nostalgia things where it's like, you know, hey, people, remember dial tones? So? Yeah, why? It's like, hey, wasn't that cool? No. Uh, anyways, we, we, we digress. So, so season of dreams, uh, interesting. I've, I've picked it up. I've got a copy to, uh, of my own, uh, but, uh, Nexus modern sorcery. So this, this looks like a, this is definitely a different, this is a, a departure from season of dreams. What, what is Nexus modern sorcery about? Um, again, it's still a modern game, but it's okay. fully magic world. It's like Dresden verse on steroids. Mm -hmm. So you go into a couple of other worlds that everybody's flat out a magician and rock and the word go. Uh -huh. um, it's kind of my PBTA love letter to Mage of the Ascension. Okay. Um, and it all worked in that, except the timing. Okay. I released it smack bang in the middle of COVID. Yeah. So <laughs> I had a huge pile of sessions uh, so, you know, ready to go. So the people who want to play can mm -hmm. have it run by the guy who made it sort of thing. Right. But all of them fell through. Because, you know, health and um, work schedules went to shit for, like, everybody. Yeah, just so, general And again, it's like, I have to keep in mind, that's not a comment on the quality of me, the game designer, or the game. It's mm -hmm. just shit-ass timing. Right. <laughs> just shocking, you know. But it, it does make me reluctant to run it again because I'm like, I don't want to set myself up for a fall because it's frustrating as shit. I, yeah. I, you I, know, I, game after game after game falls through, mm -hmm. and it's no one's fault. It's just... Two of them are available on this day. Two of them are available two days after that, and you're like, ah, shit. <laughs> yeah, I, I get it. I, I, I get it. I mean, I obviously, I, I don't. There's, I, I'm not designing a game or, or trying to create an adventure and run it, but, but just based on the the general aspect on how even bringing a group together works, and that that mm. is that is frustrating and sometimes can can fall all apart just to general timing. So I add, add on top of that, you're like, you want to promote play test and you know and finally finalize or, or bring your game to fruition it, just the stacks of frustration on top of that so i'm sure you yeah. know a lot a lot of people watching this can can definitely relate to that if they've ever done an ounce of game design you know these days it's um but you persevere though because um you know there's there's no shortage of other things you've, you've created um some some aspects to support nexus modern sorcery you've got um, you know, you've got a companion that, that, you, that you did for it called Secrets and Shadows. Um, so, so definitely something that, you know, for, 
There'll be links to all this in, in the description that people can definitely go and check it out, which I highly recommend. But we're here to talk about something a bit more important is your current uh, project, which is Don't Pay the Ferryman. So let me bring that up here real quick. Make sure I've got the right tab. You don't want to see the, the one I've got minimized. Um, uh, <laughs> um, so we have Don't Pay the Ferryman, second edition. So so as mentioned earlier, this this was this this project was originally written for um, first edition old Powered by the Apocalypse, but but this new one, even though it is compatible with PBTA, you you also have it compatible with another game called Dragon Bane. I don't know if anyone's heard of it. Uh, maybe they have. Who oh, knows? I hope they have. I mean, I, I think it was kind of popular. Who knows? There there, there there may be some support to this. Who who knows? But um, so so let's. Um, before we get in, before we get into it, though, I'm just uh, out of curiosity. So, so you and I, you know, we, we speak, you know, frequently online, and you know, we'll, we'll chat also in, in, you know, in the in the various chats. And and I'm aware, you know, of, of your recent uh, infatuation with Dragon Bane, and with good cause, because I love Dragon Bane also, as do a lot of people. Um, so, but um, but for for the people watching and those interested, what what is it? And I think this is this is also a good question for. A lot of people, you know, who are into game design or who are creating a game for another game system, I should say. So, what what is it about Dragon Bane that that made you go, "Hey, even though I've, I'm going to be creating this game for a game system I'm familiar with and I love, powered by the Apocalypse, and I'm going to maybe update it a little bit," but you know, Dragon Bane is something special, or obviously you wouldn't have written a game for it. So, what what is it about Dragon Bane that that you enjoy that you that inspired you to you know make uh, Don't Pay the Ferryman compatible with it? It's um, yeah, the, like the, the the taglines are sort of mirth and mayhem, fast and furious fun, and mm -hmm. it is. It, yeah. It's what I want. It's a good mid-level crunch. It's it's sort of more crunch than powered by the apocalypse, but less than like D and D and Brawlmaster and that. Uh huh. And uh, just enjoying playing and running it. And yeah. I thought, yep, yeah, this is the system I can tell stories with for my own setting. Um. But also the community, both in the, the Discord and Facebook, everybody's supportive. There's no addition warriors. There's no, that's, you're not doing right. They're like, well, yeah. if you want to do that, try this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. It's all, it's it, positive. I, I, I agree. I, I, I mean, I, I haven't really seen anyone in, in, in the Dragon Bane chats or queues or anything like that of anyone who is like, I don't know how, how to describe it. There, there's not really a negative vibe at all. Uh, if the people that enjoy it, enjoy it, enjoy it. And if people don't like it, they've moved on. So you don't have these kind of lingering aspects of, you know, this is broken. That's broken. We got to fix this. We got to fix that. It's just people, you know, espousing, you know, the, the, the joy of, of Dragon Bane and of course supporting it, um, you know, cause they're, they're, they're obviously bringing more stuff out, but so let's, let's, let's talk about don't pay the ferryman though. So. So you don't pay the ferryman here says it, it's a role playing game in the fantasy genre, heavenly influenced by uh, Celtic and Greek mythology. The characters spend their time finding peril, keeping vows and seeking resolution. Um, so oops, oh, that's right. I got to realize the, 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 the windows over here, not on the one that we're recording on, like I said, unprofessional. Um, <laughs> so good. Um, so let, let's, so let's, let's, Let's talk about. Uh, go, go ahead and, and bring us through this a little bit. So just just tell us a bit about this because this 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 uses Dragon Bane's rules though. This is not something that takes place in the Dragon Bane world. Is that correct? No, no, no. Uh, okay. the, the default Dragon Bane world is Misty Vale, mm -hmm. um, uh, and it's quite a small area. Um, don't get me wrong. The box has great value. You get eleven quests with it. Yeah. It's great mm -hmm. for value and time. Yep. But I like a, a big world, I guess, because I inverted commas grew up with a big world like grey orc and forgotten realms mm -hmm. huge area to explore also you know we live in big countries yeah. we can go for six hours flat out and still be in the same country you know we're just used to a big area yeah the different differences so your, your differences is your desert is bigger um but yeah very your true desert's plural <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah and it's I wanted a much bigger area, and that was part of the mm -hmm. iteration of the homebrew world I've been doing over the years. Okay. If you scroll up to look at the hex map, part of when you're selling stuff through drive-through, mm -hmm. 
um, you have to get a physical copy to make sure it's all good before they let you sell it, which makes sense. They don't want to let you sell a piece of shit, basically. Right. And the first print uh, test print, the maps were garbage. They were all blurred, and it was just like I'd done some screenshots and did it up nice. And then I thought, you know what? I'm going to go old school and do hexographer. Mm-hmm. And they came out a hell of a lot better. And, I thought, oh. <laughs> and more people liked it because of that. So I'm kind of glad that happened. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it looks fabulous. I, 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 I don't even want to know what the, what the original looked like. So, but yeah. So that, that's. Yeah, it was just. Yeah, and they, and and to be fair, sorry, didn't didn't mean to interrupt you, uh, uh-huh. but uh, but but to be fair, the, there's there's a lot of interest in hex crawls. Um, mm. There's there's a lot of different games that you know they've been around for a while. I mean, not th- not that they didn't utilize it, but just just in some of the you know the uh, the, the chitter chatter that I listen to and witness is you know, obviously the old school gamers. You know, hex crawl. You know, we we love hex crawls, but yeah. but uh, things like Mork Borg. Um, you know, there's there's full on hex crawl adventures being presented to that, uh, presented through that. Um, there's there's sea adventures that are becoming more popular. Things such as you know, again another Borg, pirate Borg, and whatnot. But but the the exploration aspect that, that people are enjoying more, they they want to go out into the, a wider world. It seems and not be just yeah. contained to a town or a village or a localized area named after you know a a sharp edged weapon. That solely yeah. exists game after game. Anyways, uh, but uh, <laughs> yeah, Sword Coast. Well, there's a lot of stuff. Like in the early 2000s, there's a lot of, you know, urban focus in like, what's his face? Eberron and Forgotten Realms. Yes. And, and then like Blades in the Dark on the PBTA side. Yeah. But I'm a tree hugger. I like being out in the wilderness mm-hmm. sort of thing. So I wanted a big world to explore that isn't focused on cities. Mm-hmm. And you can certainly do that. I mean, the the hexes are like twenty k or twelve miles. Okay. So you could still zoom in and do a hex crawl from there as well if you really want to. Right. Right. So so the, so the land is called uh, uh, Rikirta. 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 Yeah. Uh, it has here is a collection of locations including the Gloom, which is a combination of dreamlands and subterranean labyrinths. So so is 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 the Gloom a physical place or because when you hear when you hear dreamlands your your mind immediately goes to like a you know lovecraftian you know dreamland or or is it is it, it part of the world itself? it's the other world it's a, mm-hmm. a big astral plane sort of mishmash part of it is dreamlands which mm-hmm. is you know created from dreams and thoughts and energy mm-hmm. and the other part of it is the underworld which is think classic greek mythology underworld oh okay pretty much lock that in you don't need to change that right it's even got the ferryman from the title yeah. running around in it or well, well boating around in it <laughs> I, i'd like to see the ferryman on roller skates you know he's going to carry you on a pair of roller skates but the boat will do um so so who will you be interacting with uh, other citizens of force of the four cities including minotaur satyr and and wolfkin so so have you have you created any new classes for this game to be utilized within it or is it going to be be leaning on the classes available through dragon no i made um druids druids okay which are a kind of version of mages but you can still play regular mages as well but they're all they worship the nine gods they follow the nine gods teachings which is not always a good idea Uh. (laughs) because they're capricious bastards right but (laughs) <laughs> yeah, they are. They do have their religious really bent. Right. So, okay, that's. Let me find where I was at. Okay. One of the things I saw mm-hmm. on the Dragon Man Discord is: Is there a list of gods? Is there? Where's the holy water? Where's the yeah. religion? I was like, it's not in there. No. <laughs> <laughs> you got to have that if you want. It's like, well, for people that want that, bam, I've got a world that has it. It's all baked in. So, so is the is so the game itself is, is obviously is a setting. Um, is is there things that that accompany besides you know the setting details and whatnot? So uh, there's there's three monster factions that exist within within your world. Uh, you, you've got reptiles from Tirnadris, right? It's, yes. Yeah. Yep. Please tell me if I'm not pronouncing it correctly. Uh, no, no, I don't want you to fumble this. Go for it. Oh fuck! <laughs> uh, the the former evil empire of Tirnaskia. Yep. Um, and the fairy monarchy of ascendancy of, of Storven. Yeah. Oh, hey. Yeah. There's two other factions oh, that, crap. that you find out about. <laughs> Do I have to pronounce those two? Uh, those are the three overt ones that like, uh, one of them is, is actually a war happening. Okay. Okay. Um, so one of the influences for this game is that there's a comic called Slain, which is very Conan. Yes. 
and there's a goddamn lot of carnage in that comic. I, <laughs> so if, if you want to link into that, go head to the war zone and off you go. I've, I, I haven't read it personally. I, I, I know I picked up a digital copy of one of the, you know, um, anthology editions or something somewhere but i've never haven't read it yet but but i've seen imagery of it and yes it's it's very it's it's very 90s uh in in its violence so there's there's no yeah, shortage very, um, of heavy metal magazine yes yes yeah. um so so things that we <clears throat> so there's there is a focus of non-combat uh task for your character which you know uh, well the options there right you know if you want a project of I want to climb the highest three mountains mm -hmm. you can do that while you're doing other quests and stuff and then right. when you've ticked it off Bang, you get an advancement mark or an XP, depending on which system you're playing. Mm -hmm. And that way, it's, it's good to have goals, have a bit of depth to your character rather than... Uh, okay. So... You know, I'll kill stuff for money. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, it, that, that, that's... That's fun initially, but sometimes you want a little bit more, a little bit more meat with your game. So, and and I think yeah. coming from a story, from a storytelling game background, you know, it's, there, there's obviously interest in things other than just you know hack and slash and you know whack and smash and all and all that. Um, so you've got something here called virtue and vice. Uh, it's it's our traits to help flash out their personality. What 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 is that? Um, yeah, in both versions, you can have like a virtue and vice, like mm -hmm. wrath and charity or something. Okay. And then in during a quest or in between quests, you can say, I'm going to spend my time helping the poor or whatever. And then you can roll on the table and you might get contacts or some right. information or something from that. Okay. Just a, it fleshes out your personality, but also ties back into the rest of the world. Okay. And, and, and obviously it, it, it gives opportunities for things to occur during downtime too. You know, in, in in the aspects of the game, um, which which I'm I'm, I'm what the hell? yeah. Da, 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 where is? Are you looking up something? Yep. Okay. So, embracing your virtues. So you do some charity and you help out some people. Mm -hmm. You want to roll a d twenty for me? Oh, sure. I've got it right here. I, I oh fuck, it's empty. Oh, that's right. I, I I put oh, it. Just pick no. A <laughs> no, no, no. We're this again, you know. Again, this 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 episode is brought to you by Uncle Joel's Mint Balls. It's not just um, keeps you aglow, but also holds your dice. Um, give me a second here, and mind you, you know, again, this 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 will be edited, so we're not keeping all this nonsense in. Um, you know, it, it'll go from roll a d twenty to me going uh, <laughs> uh, twelve. Okay, so that would be under your fourteen charisma. <laughs> so you can you can choose from one of the four options. So okay. While you're doing your charity work, you hear about exploration or patrol opportunities. Mm -hmm. You attracted enemies' attention. They're after you. What do you do? Okay. Uh, you hear about fishing, mining, or farming opportunities. Mm -hmm. Or you get a vision of a past event from someone you know. Okay. Interesting. So, so then at that point, I would pick. I would obviously pick one of those, and then give you a little yeah. bit of things, and then we would, you know, either yeah. flesh and it out. Go back to the character level, and say, yeah. "This is what actually happens." Yeah, and off we go. So I like that. Some, it, it's a kind of blur the time be between quests, rather than we're on a mission or not. Well, sort of thing. I, I, I'm a big fan of, of downtime activities and games that present it, such as that, because uh, I do feel a lot of times it's either that stuff is swept under the rug. Uh, but there's a lot mm. of interesting things that can happen, and, but it doesn't always have to be. Let's go carousing at a tavern, you know, lose all of our yeah. money and wake up the next morning naked and broke. So let's go adventuring again. I mean, that's uh, that's Conan, but not every game is Conan. So. Right, exactly. <laughs> so because I, like, I remember in Conan it was actually written into the rules. I was like, wow. <laughs> no, you have <laughs> to. Really, yeah. yeah, you you have to. You have to remain broke and hungry. And and again, I don't mind that if if you know if that's if I'm expecting it. I know if it's Conan. Yeah. That's going to happen. But but, but like it, mm -hmm. that role you just did wouldn't happen every time you do charity. It's right. Every now and then we go. Okay, let's roll on this table to give you you know something yeah, that happens. Something to do. Absolutely. It's an option. It's not you know. It's not forced. It just happens every time. Again, you're not forced to wake up naked in an alley. You know, with all your coin gone. Um, so you've you've added you obviously added quite a lot as far as the creatures are concerned. So and I, you know and, and one of the I mean obviously not as much anymore, but you know Dra Dragon Bane the box set like, as you mentioned is, is great. Uh, it's you get a lot of bang for your buck, but um, you know there there you know there is isn't a lot within that. I mean they did come out with the bestiary which adds more to it, uh, but still yeah, creatures. yeah. 
Uh, but still, the um, you know, not not saying that it's lacking, but there's 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 no shortage of necessity to fill in with more monsters. We love monsters, you know, are, and you know the, the both both hospitable and horrific, as you say. So you've you've added thirty. Uh, 30, 30 creatures, both hospitable and horrific. Uh, an ancient race of, of scorpion creatures known as uh, n- Ninazu. N- <laughs> Ninazu? <laughs> Ninazu, yeah. Okay, well, I mean, hey. Yeah. Uh, I, you know. But um, the leaning into the Celtic and Greek mythology, the okay. creatures are integral to that because a lot of what you know about them mm-hmm. is these weird ass creatures that are not like people, although oh. oddly like yeah. them as well. And, you know, doing the one to six attacker race for Dragon Man creature was wonderful. It's like, oh, they're going to enjoy getting this shit thrown against them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then... But mm-hmm. let me give you an example. So, uh, centaurs or centaurs. Okay. What, what people know about them is they will keep their word, they stick to their agreements. Okay. What you may have heard is that they can't resist a challenge or a bet. Right. May have heard. Right. Now, yeah, most, both sides have got bugger all to do with combat. It's not a combat statistic. It's just an interesting thing that fleshes out the monster a bit. But mm-hmm. I've got known lore and like rumors for all 30 creatures. Right. Because you want variety in your interactions. You don't just want some combat array, you know? It's like, yeah. yeah. Totally. No, that, no that's, I, and again, uh, a bestiary is something that can go several directions. You know, it could be just a, a bunch of pictures with stat blocks, or they can actually flesh them out and make them interesting and, and, and be able to utilize in your game more than just something to stab with, with your dagger, you know, throw a fireball at yeah. and still, still there. Well, still their on coins. the topic of um, pictures, mm-hmm. other people sort of back every other Kickstarter, mm-hmm. not looking at anyone, Scott, <laughs> but <laughs> I've, I get a lot of stock art. I've got like 600 bits of stock art. Mm-hmm. Not just in this game, but right. because I've got that as a library, I do have quite a bit of nice stock art as part of the, the best story because it does save you a lot of time to go, here's what this creature looks like. But, right. No. Um, one thing I learned when I was doing um, Nexus Modern Sorcery, mm-hmm. I had pictures from like 12 different artists, which is great. You've got so much to choose from, but you like the styles all over the place. Yeah. It's better to choose like four to six and go, here's a theme of what the world and the creatures look like sort of thing. I, and once I did that, I like, ah, okay, this this looks much better rather than kitchen sink friggin' mess, which yes. we had a lot of with AD&D 2nd Edition. Yeah, yes, yes. Uh, and, and it's it's a rare situation where you where you can have a book filled with many different artists' um, uh, renditions and their interpretations of things. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it dis- disjoints the whole thing, as you said. And yeah. uh, but uh, every, every once in a while, you'll you know you'll for for every Dungeon Crawl Classics, there's another game where it just it, it, it the f- 15 pages in, you're like, this is not working. You know, I I don't understand. <laughs> These pictures tell me there's eight different worlds here, but you're telling me there's one. So, uh, but um, yeah. so. Yeah. So not only that, you've you've got you know you you've got these these thirty new creatures. Um, you've also mentioned that there's there's a war going on. Um, there's there's an invasion between the uh, Fomori, Fomori, Fomori. Yeah, Fomori. And the uh, Tirnadris. Um, so um, actually, is that correct? The Fomori right. began attacking caravans and travelers. Yes, three season invasions ago, the, the invasion started. Yes, so so you've got an you've got an active conflict also going on with your within your world, which is which yeah. I you again don't, it's interesting. You don't have to join in that. It's yeah. just there, you know. But that's it's an option. It's there as an option. It's in the background. But again, it, it brings life into the world. It's not just a map, and you know where wherever you go, that's happening. But you know, knowing that yeah. there, there's things going on in the background that 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 you know contributes well, to around a hundred years ago, all the good guys, you know, mm-hmm. regular civilized species were slaves to like a cyclops mm-hmm. empire, and then they joined up together and freed themselves, and they've been free for about thirty years, so like just over a generation. Mm-hmm. But what that means is there's shit tons of ruins all over the place. We can go and explore yeah but it's also why the civilizations get along because they had to to break free right so so in the dragon bane version you've got two new spell lists beast form and illusions 
Um, uh, would you yeah. like Would you like to add to that? Because you know, beast form I, I feel might explain itself, but there there might be some interesting yeah, things. Shifting in into animal forms, yeah. and right. the more difficult ones, and it's a more powerful version of the animal, right? And then then so illusions. It's, you know, it's like a wolf, not a chihuahua. It's a, it's a useful <laughs> animal. <form. laughs> Don't tell me how to run my dragon being game that I, that I backed. <laughs> If if they want to turn into a chihuahua, that's my decision. Um, and then 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 illusions. Uh, you know, uh, I would assume illusions deal with illusionary aspects. You know, making things look like yeah, yeah. they're not there. Audio and not, visual illusions, visual, you know, auditory and all that. So you got two player kins. You got minotaurs and satyrs, um, and then you got new equipment. I Cher- always like them. I think because oh. I back when I ran um, Palladium, okay. they had a lot more. I think they called them like savage races at the time. But okay. More wilderness orientated species is more accurate. Right. And there was minotaurs and centaurs and mm-hmm. that sort of thing. And I always like that because if they all look and act like humans, what's the point? Right. Yeah. It's a bloody federation all over again. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you've got you've got new equipment. So you've got chariots. You've got woad and cauldron. So as someone who who doesn't know what is what is a woad? Um, I'm going to get a lot of British people angry with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we but go. Ooh, it's basically it's like a a, a war paint, but it's it's ceremonial as well. It's, okay, it's, you're saying you're committing to the gods, you're committing to your tribe, you're right. committing to the fight mm-hmm. as you're about to go into war, and you, you know you you put it on to show your dedication and your commitment. But it, you don't just whack any old paint on. It's got to be generally expressed by the priests or the druids, and mm-hmm. yeah, okay. It's a, it's a spiritual experience using it, but it basically makes you feel better in combat because you've got the woad on. You can take right. on the world. Yeah, so it, there's other know, people that can d- describe it better, but that's the. the oh no, that's fine. No, I, I get it. As soon as you describe it, I'm like okay. I mean, for lack of a better term, it's it's. It's essentially body paint, war paint, that kind of thing that that gives you they, that that benefits you one way or another, uh, you know, yeah. with within the game. So and, and thank and thank you for the um, for my YouTube short soundbite, you know, where you say I'm going to have a lot of British people mad at me. So that's 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 going up first before this episode. Just kidding. Um, so so so, but there's more. You know, for the powered by the apocalypse version, you have chase and wilderness journey rules. So I have an important question for you. Have you perfected chase rules in RPGs? Of course I have. <laughs> see, see, fantastic. Sold again. It works well. You yeah. can use it whether you're on a horse or a chariot or running or whatever. Right. Um, and, and no, actually, those chase rules are borrowed straight out of Nexus Modern Sorcery. I didn't need okay. to change them because we played tested them a lot yeah. during that one. So that, well, yeah, I just pulled them straight in without need to change them. The hey. wilderness journey is just. When you zoom out and yeah. you do some random encounters, but tied into the ongoing story rather than just a monster rocks up. Okay, I mean, if it ain't broke, you know, you know what I mean, you know. Yeah. And, and yeah. but but if it is broke, Chaosium, uh, maybe try fixing it. Uh, <laughs> I'm, that was ki- I, I'm kidding. I love you, Chaosium. You know. Uh, don't don't at me, and I would like some free books. Uh, anyways, um, so um, so not being you know being somewhat versed in Power of the Apocalypse, uh, but still you know not as versed as you are. You've got you've got six playbooks and six kin species to choose from. Is this different than the than the, the than the other than the older version, just PBTA, or is this new to this one also? Um. There's a lot more abilities from each of the species, okay. but it means there's more crap you've got to write on your character sheets. I'm like, eh, let's let's kind of streamline it a bit. Right. And each species, you get sort of a set ability and then a choice of out of three, and then you just add that. Right. But any species can be any playbook because, you know, restriction on that is shit. Okay. <laughs> So, so it says here what you get with it. You know, you get your core rules, 100, 126 pages, you know. Dragon Bane PBTA, so you you know you get two for the price of one. Um, setting details. No, no, no. Yep. You choose which version you want. Oh, you choose. Okay, sorry. Did... Yeah. yeah. But having said that, the setting details are the same. Right. It's not a different planet. It's exactly the same thirty pages of info, sort of thing. So, which so, is yeah. sort of a solid overview, but not. It, it's not a. 
encyclopedia of stuff. It's enough right. to sort of get some games going, lots of adventure ideas. Right. But there's still plenty of room to do yeah. your hex crawl or do whatever you want to make, do. Make it your own and, and work work within it. Yeah. yeah, maybe I should let the, the author actually sell his game rather than make assumptions. <laughs> Me- mental <laughs> mental notes, Scott, for the next interview. Um, so, but... Um, but 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 regardless of of the version that you get, you you do get a 126 page core rule book, um, yeah. and and it is uh, you get three tomes, right? So you get Pan- Pandemonium of Perils, seven pages with quests and mini quests, um, yeah. with Rick, 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 with and the Ricarda Games, a Bronze Age version of the Olympics with soccer. Yes, don't you the mean best sport don't, in the world? Don't you mean me, don't you mean football? Yeah, well, English football. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone in Australia calls it soccer, and here we call football AFL, which is not what you call football either. So, <laughs> oh God. now now my ears are bleeding. Humans. I'm trying to follow along, but but hey, well, well then, good. Uh, at least we're not the All only right. ones who call it soccer. Right? You know, if anyone gives so me, you, yeah, the Rakuta Games, yeah, has archery, caber tossing, not a euphemism, okay, wrestling, marathon, and soccer. Oh wow, very cool. Wow. And then, then you get a cacophony of characters, 50 pages of pregens, yes. character sheets, playbooks, and player maps. So the player map, so are you, uh, this may be a dumb question, but the player maps that you're getting, um, are these going to be within within the book itself, or are they going to be things that you can pull out of the book? Or? Uh, I put them in cacophony of characters, because that's kind of the player's guide. Okay. And then the GM version of those maps is in Pandemonium of Perils, which is where the actual got quests it. are. Got it. And then we've got dozens of maps, as you were talking about earlier, utilizing Dungeon Draft and hex- Hexographer. And you've got art uh, by Dean Spencer, G- Gary Dupree, Jacob Blackman, and James Shields. Is that J.D. Shields? Or is that a different person? I think so, yeah. Okay, just, just curious. I, Every now and then he would, would do a Kickstarter with like 50 bits of stock out for 50 yeah. bucks. And it's like, sweet, that's a good deal. Bang, and I backed a couple of them. All right. Ooh, I like the cover. This this is the cover of Pandemonium of Well, that's Paris. two bits of stock out right there. Yeah. <laughs> But still, it, it see the thing with stock art is is you know there there's plenty of stock art out there, but it, but of course you you still have to have some you know it's the way you utilize it and present it. I mean just just slapping something on a white you know white sheet of paper doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work. Yeah. And, and well, when I did it for Nexus Modern Sorcery, I took one of the bits of stock art and put it on like a, a sunset picture that I take because I mm-hmm. like taking photographs. Right. And I showed the guy who made the stock art, and he's like, "Wow, that's amazing! I'm so happy you've used." They are. I'm mm-hmm. like, why wouldn't I? It's bloody beautiful. You yeah. Know? <laughs> but it's 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 good to get in touch with people and say, hey, look, I've used your thing. It's really cool. So so what do you get with your pledges here? So you you we've got um we've, we've got, got the PDF version. Okay. Or we can get the PDF and print version. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's I struggled with Kickstarter of getting sort of the best way to do it. Right. So basically, I put the prices down as much as possible, and then you can get the print version for like as cheap as possible that I can make it. So is this is, technically it does mean you've got to pay me, and then you've got to pay drive through. Okay. So 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 the, so the PLD as low as possible. So to make it feasible. So is the PLD going to be through drive through? The, the it's not you're not getting you're not yes. sending it to get printed. Yes, uh, that, that that would make sense because frankly speaking, I don't want to pay two hundred fifty bucks to have my three books shipped from Australia. Um, so <laughs> no, no, it'll all be done through drive through. <laughs> Excellent. So, so Blake, anything else you would like to add regarding don't pay the ferryman? I mean, it, it's, it's, it's doing, it's doing real good. There's, there's, there's just a few days left on it. There's, there's 11 days left and you're, you're close to making your goal, which, which I'm, I'm absolutely certain you will. Uh, but, uh, anything you would like to, to share to the people well, yeah, watching? If you like PBTA, mm-hmm. Bronze Age Fantasy, fun, uh, I think you'll enjoy it, or Dragon Bane. You want a bigger setting with you know lots of locations and maps to explore and right. deities and more gear built, built into it. There's plenty there for you. Mm-hmm. If you're more into other games like OSC or Forbidden Lands, there's still a bunch of shit you can use. You mm-hmm. can use the quests, you can use the maps, you can use the gods or whatever. M- mine it for what you're worth. I'm not the the bloody game police. <laughs> Take what you want and have fun with it. You know. Oh, that's that's fantastic, and, and and I agree. I mean, just the the setting itself is is interesting as hell, as far as I'm concerned. It, it it's something I I'm a big fan of, you know, of of bronze settings within role playing games and whatnot. Uh, the the mixture of of the histories you have here is 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 great. So it's it's definitely something that, you know, being a Dragon Bane fan myself, I could jump right into it with the rules. But even with that, 
it seems like there's there's going to be enough here to 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 utilize and you know in in, in any game that that I'm running, especially my local yeah, OSC. Well, go, okay, I'm not into Bronte stuff, but I can use the quests in regular Dragon Battle. Yep. Go for it. Yep. Go for it. It's six quests. Absolutely. Plus six mini quests. You know, it's like yeah. <laughs> absolutely. And 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 the price is right. And and by by doing so, you will you will help keep his his family in fosters for another month. So, just kidding. <laughs> Don't treat fosters. <laughs> Jeez, we we sell that cat's piss to people overseas, <laughs> and we fall for it every time. Uh, so, so there, there you go, everyone. Uh, this you know this this is definitely you know this this I I I personally think it's a great game. I wouldn't have Blake on to talk about it if I didn't. Um, and I definitely think it's it's worth checking out and supporting. So. So uh, def- there'll be links in the description. Definitely hop on, take a look at it. You know, even if if what we talked about doesn't doesn't ring your bell, pass it along to other people and friends because there's definitely something here for I think everyone to enjoy. Regardless, you know, as Blake said, if you know if you if you're not playing Power by the Apocalypse, if you're not playing Dragon Bane, there's enough here in in uh, in Blake's vast imagination for you to mine and utilize in your own game. So, so Blake. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time on whatever awesome. you know hour it is or day or year. I don't know what it's over there in Australia. Um, for, for, you know. <laughs> it's, it's 8 a.m. in the morning, 20.30. Oh, my God. I wouldn't get up for an interview at 8 a.m. Uh, so, so thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to come on to the show. And, and it's, 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 it's been something that you know I've been wanting to do for a while. But, but you know, once we're done here, you know, we'll, 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 we'll see you in the pub. <laughs> You know, we Blake, 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 Blake and I talk, you know, at least, you know, once a week, you know, if that sometimes a week will go by, but we chat online and likewise, we're both up during, uh, you know, um, Sean Kelly's uh, Saturday morning chit chat. And, you know, the first two minutes are each of us giving each other shit uh, before we listen to Sean Yammer on about whatever the fuck. I don't pay attention. Uh, <laughs> 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 no, it's a good show. It, it is great. It's objective. It is great because, you know, but, 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 you know, I, I, I'm, I'm the redheaded stepchild of the show. Sean loves nothing more than to give me shit for some reason. Uh, but I'm sure I deserve it. So, but anyway. It's hardy. You're late. I <laughs> yeah, no. What's your excuse this time, Mr. Jost? What, another grandmother passed away? Um, so, so there you go, everyone. Uh, don't pay the ferryman. Second edition drag, for Dragon Bane and Powered by the Apocalypse. Check it out, back it, you'll enjoy it. I'm sure you will. Pass it on to your friends, let them check it out. Hopefully they'll back it too. And Blake, have a, I hope you have a wonderful time down there, you know, the rest of your day in Australia. Um, and, you know, once hope, well, my time will catch up to you eventually because I, I, I'm enjoying a Saturday. You got to go to work tomorrow. I don't. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, it's all good. And, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but so, yeah, you know, go ahead. Enjoy whatever games you're playing. Yep. Treat each other cool, and mm-hmm. you know, try different games. Yep. And where can they find you, Blake? Oh, usually online as Flying Fox three six nine, and either Blue Sky, mm-hmm. not Blue Ski, Blue Ski, and Twitter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. I'll put. I'll definitely put links in in the in the description. Also, a link to his his personal Facebook account, so you can friend him. No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Jesus. All right. All right, everyone. Uh, Thank you for watching. And uh, this has been yet another completely unprofessional interview. Have a wonderful day.